The society today is evolving faster than ever. Everything is new and everything is different. Even paying bills is online. Innovations and the entrepreneurs have made our life convenient and easier. Their fast and fluent inventions have made our life easier than ever. Today is a good day to talk about entrepreneurship. Good day everybody. Welcome to our class for today. My name is Vanessa Rendal and I will be going to discuss something about entrepreneurship. I hope you listen well and let's start. Our topic is protecting the idea and other legal issues for the entrepreneur. As we all know nowadays, there are lots of entrepreneurs and business-minded people all around the globe. Even if you just sell online, sell dresses, clothes, foods online, you post it on Facebook or anywhere else, that's considered as entrepreneurship. You sell cookies or bake cakes for your neighbors then yeah that's entrepreneurship now I will be talking about how you can protect your business especially those large or huge firms already how can you protect and how can you assure that your business is safe and will last longer but before anything else let us first go to our goals what should we work on today for today's lesson Number one is to identify intellectual property assets of a new venture, including software and websites. To understand the nature of patents, the rights to provide, and the filing process. To understand the purpose of trademark and the procedure for filing. To learn the purpose of a copyright and how to file for one. Number five, to identify procedures that can protect a venture's trade secrets. Number six, to understand the value of licensing to either expand a business or start a new venture. The last two, to recognize the implications of new legislation that affects the board of directors and internal auditing process for public companies. And lastly, number eight, to illustrate important issues related to contracts, insurance, and product safety liability. Those are our goals and I hope we get to work on that. Now, let us talk about this man. Who is this man? Well, this is Chet Kanujia. He is the CEO of the startup Aerio. He's an Indian entrepreneur who finished mechanical engineering degree at the National Institute of Technology in Bhopal and he also finished computer systems engineering at Northeastern University. I mean, why are we talking about this man? Who is this man? Well, it's because he's the owner or the CEO of the startup Aerio, which will be tackled later. Now let's talk about Chat's background. Where did he grow up? Why did he started this venture? What pushed him through? and continue this company, the startup venture area. Okay, you can see here a television, a cable wire, and a mat pointing above him. Now, Chet grew in an average type of family, and when he turned a teenager, his family was able to buy this color television. They were really excited to use it because, as we all know, the first one that is invented was the black and white, but now it already has a color. So they were excited to use it, but what confused him is that they can only use it within a few hours, like one to two hours. Like, why can't they use it if they can pay, right? It's really questioning and it got his curiosity. A few years later, someone introduced him a cable television so he was also amazed because in this cable television people can stream to different networks i mean a lot more networks than the color television the plain color television so through this cable wire 
to be inserted on televisions you can watch a lot of movies but still in in a limited time only so he was curious and these two were added when these two were added that's why he became the most outstanding one of the most outstanding entrepreneurs around the globe just like any other entrepreneurs the sad reality is that they are not supported because a lot may think that they they may fail they they are just wasting time effort and money so that's what happened also to chat his mother denied him his mother didn't support him because they thought that chat is just doing some random stuff not knowing that th this would make them a billionaire someday now what he did was after finishing his degree he left india he wandered to other places and hoping that he would find another opportunity and he will find someone who will support him or a company that will support his idea so he finished his degree and joined a small product development firm called product genesis and this time when he joined this company a product genesis in america he was able to found navic networks in 1999 he got really amazed because that was his first ever huge step towards his dreams so he was able to sell it to microsoft for 200 million imagine that 200 million dollars the navic networks so that was in um, 1999 now what happened next what happened to to chat after selling his Navig network, Microsoft welcomed him. They let Kanojiya work in their company and indeed he worked there for almost two years. And that he realized after everything that happened to him, he was overwhelmed with money, with prices, with a lot of opportunities that he forgot what he really wanted to do. He wanted to pursue something that is really for him, that is that he really owns. So, after that, he left Microsoft and continued his venture about those two things, the television, the color television, and the cable television. Using those, he was able to make Aereo. And what is Aereo? I've been talking about it since a while ago, but what is Aereo? Allow, it allows users to store free television signals on a cloud-based DVR for streaming to many devices. Now, this Aereo company, this allows users to stream to a lot of networks, to hundreds of networks in their different gadgets, in different devices like cell phones, tablets, computers, and many more even to your mobile device or cellular phones so you can stream by just only paying eight dollars a month and what they are using what you are paying is this tiny copper antenna which you can see in the monitor that is an antenna that they use in order for you to stream to different networks how amazing is that i mean how did chat did that and then in 2011, the first completely functional prototype was developed. It was 2011 when they really had this functional prototype. And then on February 2012, the very most um, memorable moment of chat, it's because they unveiled this area to the public. They showed to the public and they opened to the public their invention. And that's it. You can already stream for $8 only for 20 hours of DVR space. So you can stream a lot of, to a lot of networks and you can stream to different devices. So you can really relate to this, especially those who are fond of watching uh, movies like the Netflix. It's a great example of, of this area company because Netflix allows us to stream to a lot of movies a lot of generous of movies for only 149 passes a month you can have it 
and you can use it into different devices you can use it to your smart TVs to your mobile phones to your laptops to your tablets and many more that's a great example of Aereo now after two weeks from unveiling of the company major television networks filed an injunction it really shocked everybody it really shocked including chat because why did the major television company networks filed a case against his company after just two weeks of revealing to the public and in the middle of 2012 the u.s court of appeals was in favor of aereo he they won the area company won because the court of appeals of the usa thought that this aerial company has no violations at all why would they close it and in fact they are um, earning so much money through this company the taxes of aerial it's it's a great loss for for the u.s company u.s government if Aereo will be shut down. But in 2013, the major television networks didn't give up on dragging down Aereo company. So why did they do that? I mean, has Aereo did something that will ruin them? Well, not literally. But if Aereo will continue on going to top, what will happen to the other television networks? Unfortunately, Aereo really lose the case. So, Chet paused the operation. Do you think Chet just gave up like that and just sit there and didn't do anything about it? Well, he didn't pursue about Aereo anymore because he realized that he really forgot to do something that will be tackled later in a further discussion. So, what he did is that he made another um, venture which he named Starry. So, you can Google it and you can see that it's a fast growing company the starry okay so about the story of chat did you ask yourself why did the aerial company the outstanding the fast growing company just shut down like that did chat had violations or he lacked about something now we will be talking about copyright issues in this chapter we will talk further about that now let me start by asking you what is intellectual property from the word itself property so it includes patents trademarks copyrights and trade secrets so these are the asset of a business these are the assets of a company or any venture, any type of entrepreneurial act. This intellectual property is considered as the asset, the most precious thing that a company has that they should protect. Now, it includes the patents, your uh, liability, your trademarks, your logos, or anything like that. And your trade secrets what is your secret of your cookie it's so delicious I like that what is your secret recipe okay a lot of entrepreneurs have zero knowledge about how to secure their business I mean many of us just do business because we want to earn money we want to earn profit now the first thing that you should do is to find a lawyer you need a lawyer an entrepreneur will need legal advice of course especially if you do not have a lot of information anything about law so you need to have a lawyer it will be based on such factors whether your business is a new venture a franchise an independent startup or a buy buyout so it also depends if you produce a product or you do a service usually the one that gets a lawyer are those only which has big business already right i mean paying a lawyer takes a large amount of money so if you just have a small business then you cannot afford to get a lawyer so that is why um, those larger firms 
are more protected than any other business who hasn't have a lawyer because having a lawyer lets a company or lets someone feel secured and the company will be confident to have some new ideas ventures because they know that they have a lawyer that will protect them and of course they seek legal advices which is very helpful to their business they know they are in the right track now the question is how to get a lawyer what are those things to be considered in getting a lawyer and how should you select one just like any other professionals lawyers are expert to laws and to specific areas of law so how can you pay or hire a lawyer the lawyer may work on a retainer basis by which he or she provides office and consulting time so like what we see in movies like if the girl got caught by the police then he will call his attorney come come and pick me here and um solve the case for me or like that that's an example of a lawyer that works in a retainer business you pay them monthly like you're giving them a job and in return they will give you any time office time and consulting time and the other way is in some cases a lawyer may be hired for one time fee for one time only like you want to have a patent on your business so you hire a lawyer for you to know how to file a patent then after the court will approve your patent the patent of your business then that's the time that the, the lawyer will also end his service because you have already paid him. choosing a lawyer is like hiring an employee it's very true you have to know the abilities of that lawyer the capabilities what are their weaknesses and their strengths that would help you in your business you must relate with him or her personally like Everything is done online, but you should meet your lawyer personally. Talk to him or her casually, and if you see that you get along with each other well, and he can relate to you personally, then that's a good um, sign that you will hire that lawyer. You just have to be very careful because there are also lawyers that will invest in your business, especially if your lawyer sees that you are incapable and you lack financially then they will invest now let us proceed to the legal issues in setting up the organization what you should follow and what you should know in setting up your new business or your venture let us proceed to what is seen in the news business advice to an entrepreneur regarding the role of intellectual property in software startups well the question number one was that will you advise your friend who will start a high-tech firm business to get a patent of his business well in software ventures patents are the least important to them yes patents will assure you that no one will copy your business or your invention but it's a different thing in software venture question number two is what factors should he or she consider in the process of debating whether a patent would be appropriate to his business well it depends on the type of business because as i've said on startup ventures on software startup ventures it's a, it's a different thing they do not focus on patent number three why do you think it is expensive to develop a software patent I've said it that it takes a lot of time you need to hire a lawyer and the money that will be spent is it depends also on what type of firm you are going to patent it. so what is the most important factor that they consider first is the first mover and then the license because it's less expensive and still it gives them the privilege and the opportunity to move forward and lastly is a propriety complement to an open source these three are main important things to a software startups rather than having a patent which is very costly 
this moment, let us proceed to the patents. We've been talking about this a while ago, about patent, but what really is this thing? It is a contract between the government and an inventor. Your invention will become a public domain if you will patent your business. Lastly, the patent gives the owners a negative right because it prevents anyone else from making, using, or selling your invention. So no one can copy, no one can make another version out of it. What are the types of patents? Of course, it has its types depending on what type of business you will start. First is utility patents. Has a term of 20 years beginning on the date of filing with the Patent and Trademark Office. PTO is the organization that will process and will make your patent. Of course, it will only be approved by the government. This patent grants the owner protection from anyone else making, selling, or copying the product. Well, as what all patents do, it protects you as an owner, as an inventor. And the initial fee is $70 for electronic, but if by mail, it costs $140. The second one is designed patents covering new, original, ornamental, and unobvious for articles of manufacture. It reflects the appearance of an object. It focuses on what or how your object or product looks like. It has a term of 14 years. Unlike to the utility patents, it only has 14 years. And then the initial fee is $90. The last type of patent is the plant patents. These are issued under the same provisions as utility patents and are few new variety of plants. Of course, it's plant patents, so it talks about plants. It, let's go to international patents. Since we talk about patents, so let us now include patents around the world. Because of the emerging world and the emerging entrepreneurship world the u.s was alarmed and that they wanted to pursue inter international patents it is a must to seek protection to global markets and as a result of the concern over imitations over copying products international patenting has become a significant ip strategy for many startups it is recommended and advised that all entrepreneurs around the globe should file for this provisional patent application in order for them to secure the conception of the product or the invention. What is provisional application? This application replaces the disclosure document that was previously accepted by the PTO. And then basically, this gives the entrepreneur who files the rights to the patent based on the simple concept of first to file, of course, first come first serve. Since you're done with the provisional application, you can proceed in applying for patent, the real patent itself. What is this? What is patent application or how can you apply for patent? The patent application must contain a complete history and description of the invention as well as claims for its usefulness. And application of patent is categorized by three steps or three sections it is divided into three sections first is the introduction the description and lastly is the claims so let us focus first on the introduction of course it's the start of your application form so this contains the background the advantages and the problems that overcomes the invention so let us proceed to the description of the invention so you will describe your product it contains a brief description of the drawing so here it's more on the physical appearance and the picture or the drawing of your product so 
it should be detailed of course specific since it's a drawing so you should be specific you should label everything on it and it should comply with the PTO requirement the third one which is the last part of your application is the claim the most difficult section it's the most difficult section of application why because the claims are criteria by which any infringement will be determined in addition to those three parts of application for patent it should contain a declaration or an oath that it is signed by the inventor or inventors and this will be sent directly to the pto it will be sent by the pto with the help of your lawyer as i've said if approved then your invention will be accessible to the public and of course the fee the fee for your lawyer the fee for your for the people that helped you in that invention and the fee for the government for that patent application and another for the provisional application will depend on the patent search it is very important for an entrepreneur also to know if he or she infringes on someone's patent business method patents with the growth of internet use and software development the use of business method patents has also emerged now what about those start up without a patent can they be legal or what well not all startups will have a product or concept that is patentable now the entrepreneur should understand the competitive environment instead she or he the business owner will create a unique marketing plan now let's go to trademark after patent let's proceed to trademark what are trademarks so as you can see here these are good examples of trademark youtube broadcast yourself starbucks coffee and just do it all right trademarks may be a word maybe a symbol maybe a design or maybe a combination it could also be a slogan so that is trademark unlike the patent a trademark can last indefinitely as long as the mark continues to perform its indicated function then you can use the trademark for as long as you do not violate and your product doesn't change then you are worthy to use your trademark indefinitely so forever unlike the patent that it expires 20 14 years let us proceed to options on how to avoid infringement as what i've said i will discuss to you clearly on how someone can avoid infringement so here first assess whether the patent is existing of course you will have to know if it still exists because it exists you cannot have a patent on that if no you file for patent if yes is the patent recent or is it merely to expire you have to assess also is it new or recent or it's going to expire if it's new do expired patents exist that accomplish the same purpose then if it if it is yes you have to develop another mode or another version of that product if it is nearly to expire then you begin planning for introduction when the expiring patent will be gone so you have to fill in the space as i've said earlier when it it is nearly to expire you have to fill in in that space and if the patent is recent so can product be changed slightly without infringement so can you change the product without infringement what will you do in order for you not to be complained by the original owner then you file or you seek for a license among all the things that i've said earlier so many things that i've talked to you discussed to you these are the most important things you should remember that's it thank you so much for listening and i'm very sure that you find it really difficult to understand well i as well find it really hard but i did my best and for those who listened thank you so much and happy
Have a great day. Stay safe.